Hi folks. I thought I'll um, redo the video I've got on YouTube, which got a quite a couple of views. Um, I thought I'll redo that. It's about importing a EPS file into Lightwave. And one of the main reasons why I want to redo that is because of the annoying um, recorded sound of the keyboard and the mouse clicks and etc. So, and I thought I'd drop in a couple of few hints more, um, and the quality should be a little bit better overall as well. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to be putting this logo here as an EPS file inside of Lightwave. Now, if you get a client's EPS file or logo, sometimes there are a couple of ways about getting them into Lightwave. You can use EPS if you have them, or you can just build it from scratch. Now, this logo would be easy to build from scratch, and I've got another video on YouTube showing you how to do that. Um, but using EPS in this case is quick as well. I mean, sure, I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to guide you through it, but if I wouldn't be, uh, it'll probably take me like a minute to get a good quality logo um, converted. So it's a quick way, and it's uh, in this case a good way to do uh, to do it. So let's start off. First thing I want to tell you is an EPS file, when you load it up into Lightwave, make sure you get an EPS file version 8 um, or lower because Lightwave handles those the best. And the easiest way to do that is if you get an EPS file from your cu from your customer, just load it up into Illustrator and just save it out as an EPS file version 8 or Illustrator file AE version 8 and you'll be fine. Also, remember that EPS files, which is encamp encapsulated PostScript, can hold bitmaps and Lightwave won't handle those. So if somebody draws something in there from Photoshop and puts it into an EPS by saving it as an EPS file, you won't be able to use that. So if you've got troubles regarding that, just load it up into um, Illustrator or Photoshop, whatever, and have a look at what might be causing it. Because Lightwave handles them pretty well. Okay? So that said, we're going to be doing this logo here. Okay? So let's get right to it. So I'm going to start up uh, Modeler. And of course, it starts in the wrong screen. So here it is. So we're going to File, Import, EPS. And there you have it. If you have a logo that has some nice curves in them, make sure you put them into fine or super fine because that just adds more points to make that curve a little bit more smoother. Close polygon and polylines, that's what you basically want. The other options are just polygons or just polylines or spline curves, which could be handy as well. But in this case, close polygons and polylines. If you have a logo that has um, a couple of text in there or just some lines, this will make sure that you have all of that in there. Okay, so I'm going to choose the file, which is in my images folder, and then into the clients folder, and I'm just going to choose that EPS file. Auto access drill can be very handy actually, because if we would be using the text as well, auto access drill will, for instance, with the O, will cut out the hole in the middle instead of not. <laughs> the same with the R and the B and the B. Okay, so that might be handy, but we won't be needing that here, so I'm just going to leave it off. I'm going to press OK. Now I'm going to press the A key to fit it into the screen, the the object itself, and here we have it. Okay, we don't need the text down below. So what I'm going to do is in point mode, I'm going to lasso select with my right mouse button all those points making up that text, and I'm going to press the delete key on my keyboard, and they're gone. Now we have uh, the logo, which you thought, okay, my, that, that, that's great. I mean, so one side of polygon, that, that's looking good. I can extrude it and, um, and off I go. But I always press the W key to get my statistics. And that tells me that this logo is made out of 119 polygons. And that's not what I want. I just want two, that one and that one. So let's see what we can do. And I usually just start by going into polygon mode and just click. Okay, so this seems to be one polygon, including the area there. And I'm going to press the right bracket key to deselect. And I'm going to press the other side. And, well, luckily, it's also one polygon. So I'm not going to even bother and try to clean up this logo. What I'm simply going to do is I'm going to shift select the other logo uh, polygon as well. I'm going to press Ctrl C, copying it into the clipboard. Uh, pressing the right bracket key again. And I'm just simply going to press the delete key on my keyboard, press Ctrl V, pasting those two polygons back. Now, if I press the W key, it tells me two polygons. That's what I want. 
So now I'm going to press F2 to center out the logo. And that helps you later on in layout because your pivot point will be exactly in the middle on the origin. Okay, so later on in Lightwave layout, when you start rotating it, it'll rotate that exactly from the middle of the logo. And I think most likely you would want that. Okay, so we've done that. Now have a look at the uh, logo again quickly. So the left side is black and the right side is red. Well, easy enough. We just go in polygon mode and we choose the left side, press Q, and we're just going to call this base black. And of course, give it the black color. Okay. Deselecting it and pressing the right polygon and press Q again to surface it. And we're going to go call this base red. And of course, make sure that you actually choose the red the logo is made from. Okay. I know you're going to be lighting it and putting materials on there or whatever you're going to do. So it's going to be changing that color anyhow. But make sure that originally it is the red that the logo was intended to be used for. Okay. We've done that. Um, let's just check those two polygons here. And let's just check if they're not overlapping anywhere before we start extruding or whatever we're going to do. And sure enough, it is overlapping here. So let's go into uh, Modify and Drag. And let's just drag that next to the other one. And let's see what's happening on the bottom. Well, basically the same. So we're just going to drag that there. Now I'm going to press the space bar, dropping the drag tool, A, to fit the object into the viewports. And we should be ready to start extruding this, giving it some depth. Okay? Multiply, extrude, which is Shift E on your keyboard. And I'm going to use the control key, which constrains my movement by the first move I make. So I'm going to move it down the Z X. Control key, I'm moving it down the Z X. If I now move it to the left or the right, nothing happens. So I'm constraining my movement. Okay. So done. So now it's got some depth to it it's looking nice and you know people nowadays say oh you shouldn't be doing this blah 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 but you should if you have a logo and you want to have that logo be a logo that it catches something and it catches the eye of the one looking at it you should give the edges a little bevel because that will highlight um, when the light hits on it that will be the stuff that will be highlighted most okay and it's pretty easy to do that. Okay, so we're going to choose. First, I'm going to. Well, we can bevel it. Yeah, we can bevel it. So choose this and that. And then we're going to press the B key to bevel. And I'm going to press the, the N key, which is for the numeric panel, but you can also press it down there in the bottom. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be shifting this like three millimeters out. That's four. It's a bit too much for this logo. It isn't that big. And I'm going to set it in for three millimeters. Okay. Pressing the space bar to commit to what I've done. And when you look now, you've got a nice bevel edge. See? And that will catch the lights nicely. Especially if you put some um, shine on it. Okay. But what you also notice, because those points here were very sharp you got some errors here see it's it's started to overlap but that's easily fixed by just simply again go into the drag mode and you can just put the point or take the point which is not really nice and just drag it and put it in the right place now I did it this way in the perspective view but you could also do it down here and just drag it all at once. Okay. And we'll do that the same here. And it might be that you still need to. Uh, let me just see. Ctrl T. Just not able to pick that up. Oh, come on. Be a good daddy. Okay. Good. See, and I will have a look at the at the bottom as well, and we'll do the same there. 
because to me it looks like this is the problem okay but let's just double check make sure that nothing weird is happening and it looks looks fine to me smooth that up turn a little bit zoom in and here you might yeah we might just drag this a little bit more to make it a little bit more round do the same here okay and now you got a little a good logo which you can start animating and um, or even transform if you'd like it should be safe okay so that's it how to import a uh, an EPS file just clean it up a little bit and dress it up a little bit so that um, you can use it in Lightwave layout to do whatever your client wants you to do okay so I hope this helps you guys out and uh, if you have any questions just you know let me know cheers bye bye